My Life, My Music this week is absolutely in the world of music itself. My guest, it's a great honour to welcome to the studio Sasha Olyniuk, who is obviously well known as the principal violin in the SNG here in Maribor. Hello to all listeners, hello to you, and uh, thank you for your invitation. I'm really honoured to be your guest. <laughs> I don't think you need to be honoured, we're honoured to have you here. What I have to first talk about is you've just very recently come back from Japan and the whole concept of taking a whole orchestra to perform in Japan must be a great piece of logistical complexity. But I assume for you, it's a very interesting new artistic experience. No, it's, uh, Japan is not new artistic experience for me because uh, it was my fourth time, I think, okay. in the Japan. But uh, uh, every time is uh, more and more interesting. Mm. Uh, and... Uh, 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 we are lucky because uh, all logistic things uh, was uh, on a Japanese uh, hands. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we're just enjoying the music and travel and and have a good food and and uh, see some completely different world, uh, which is uh, really really different. Mm. Uh, but uh, on the other side, it's very very interesting. I can't believe it's all that laid back. There have to be moments of concern about all oh, my precious instruments are being loaded onto an aeroplane or something. There has to be some element of pressure, surely. No, it's not the problem uh, because uh, it's uh, very well organized and uh, also guys with the bigger instruments like violoncellos, trombones, tubas, they have a special seats. Uh, uh, we have a flight cases uh, and actually it's very safe. So it's not like, you know, you're flying tourist class and you've got to get everything in the overhead locker. Then. No, no, no. <laughs> so you're traveling in a rather exclusive way. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a quite organized crowd. Uh, and uh, we all the time we stay together, except a few Tokyo really big cities when we are in this, some different hotels. But uh, uh, the, about that, uh, I don't have any complaints. And, and, and we are just... Uh, uh, they just left us to, 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 to do the job. And how were audiences there? Could you identify a different energy from audiences in Japan that you would experience here? Oh, it's very interesting. Uh, the first time when I was in Japan, uh, we were a uh, guest uh, of Japanese princess who was on a concert in Tsankarev Dom with a gypsy band, Shukar. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, accidentally was a, a Japanese musician named Sojiro, uh, who was something like uh, Japanese Bregovic uh, mm -hmm. folk uh, music. He recorded more than 70 CDs, or I don't know. Uh, she's a, he's a living legend. Uh, and uh, he said, I want to play with these guys. And the uh, audience in the Japan, they don't know what's the gypsy music. No. Actually. Uh, it was strange. We played in the concert halls for three and a half, four thousand people in there. And first reaction was this. Really? And then applause. Uh, opera music is discovered in a Japan maybe 20 years ago. They have a national theater yep. with uh, some <laughs> really funny stuff for us. Uh, and uh, they like tragedy. Mm -hmm. They like a vocal expression. Uh, so uh, first opera theater was built 16 years ago in Tokyo. They didn't know what opera is. OK, records, uh, recordings. And they're absolutely fascinating fascinate uh, about the opera and we had more than more than 20 minutes uh, standing ovation really yeah wow we have to come back to Aida I haven't finished with that one yet but I need the first piece of music was there a plan in your music uh, I don't have a plans in my <laughs> life <laughs> but <I'm> very relaxed <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> So where do we start with the music uh, for the show? Uh, sp sp for, for today I'm bringing some music, but it's not any connections with opera and uh, my, with my job, classical music. Uh, 
What about the uh, Slovenian folk song from Prekmurje, which is recorded uh, in Los Angeles 2002 with my very good friend and dear uh, companion uh, Rock Golob. Uh, it's a very simple version of Zrailo uh, e Žito. It's a folk song from Prekmurje from uh, Tusen Doma recording in 2002. Music from Prickmoria. Yeah. Let's go back to Aida. Uh, this is lovely. I saw it here <coughs> before you, you went out. Um, it's, it was beautifully done. The costumes are spectacular. But, th of course, in any opera, the music is the key and the energy of the whole thing. Is it fun to play in something which has this kind of energy? <laughs> it's always uh, fun, uh, especially in opera. Because the symphonic music, uh, it's quite expectable. You have a conductor and the orchestra, mm -hmm. and that's all. Uh, in opera, you have a soloist, which are yesterday like this, today <laughs> like this, tomorrow you never know. <laughs> uh, you have a chorus, uh, <laughs> chorus, yes, you have orchestra, you have a conductor, you have a uh, move on uh, on a stage, uh, scenography, every ballet, yes. it's, everything is connected and, and uh, it's never the same. Mm. It's never the same. That That's, that's the this smell of the opera which I like so much. We are talking about playing in a group but it's a very b big group. It's yes. 120 <laughs> people. Yes. So uh, uh, I'm started in Ljubljana, I'm started in Opera Orchestra, and, and every musician says, oh, it's the best school, how to play in an orchestra. Because conductor do something, uh, chorus do something else, uh, <laughs> in other tempo, so like that, and you have to play and enjoy the music. Mm. So th that, that's a really, really uh, interesting thing. Uh, especially in Aida, which is uh, uh, one of the Verdi's, I think, one of the best mm -hmm. opera. I prefer Puccini musically, okay. but characters in Aida are so, so, so like 10 best Hollywood... Uh, yes. uh, They're very uh, strong. Uh, and screen... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to say... Uh, writers and and to, to work the ten years it's it's a uh, it's a fascinating it's so strong it's so strong it's clearly though quite a challenge because you've just said there are so many elements so timing and everything else is sort of it, it I'll talk about basically things yeah basic sure. things I don't, I don't talk about colors, about uh, uh, mu musically, mm. uh, breaths, uh, about the, 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 it's, its basic elements. Because it is also uh, an opportunity for, I mean, the more elements you put into something, the more opportunity there is for something not to go quite the way it was originally planned and rehearsed. Uh, and that is a challenge for a whole orchestra too. Uh, often watch you know, conductors putting in extra pieces and extending stuff uh, when you know full well it wasn't quite like that because something isn't quite ready yet or whatever. Yeah, it's funny, in opera, uh, anyway, conductor is boss. Yeah. He's a main person of performance. But not always. Those moments which we talk about uh, are when the, without conductor, without soloist, when the just groove some, some moment, you cannot explain it. No. That's the value of uh, playing in opera. Yes, yes. An ability to be in that team and make it function no matter just, what. It, it just happened. No. Yeah. Yes. It's have a direction, but. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. And it's the most beautiful moment. Fantastic. Let's have the second piece of music, please. Let's put some completely other. Uh, Vicente Amigo, Limo de Nata. Uh, Pat Metheny says he's the best guitar player in the world. Uh huh. Really? But I like his way to play playing because I'm guitar player also. My first instrument is guitar. We'll come back to <laughs> so that. So it's uh, <laughs> uh, very, uh, very. Uh, different uh, way of flamenco, jazzy flamenco playing, and uh, I really like him.
My guest in the programme today, Sasha Olenyuk. Sasha, we haven't really spoken about you and how you became what you are. You were brought up where and, and what were your early influences? What would your parents do? What made you want to follow In music? my case, is quite classical story. Uh, both of parents are musicians. Uh, uh, they never pushed me so much to, to play some... Uh, instruments, but I'm start with a, started with a guitar as a three years old. Really, uh, the a small guitar. Well, not, a very small <laughs> guitar, yeah. Uh, and at six, I already won some prize on a competition, and so their clever guys and professor said, "Let put him, let put some normal instrument in his hand because mm -hmm. guitar is not a normal instrument. Okay. So, <laughs> so Some might disagree, so but okay. <laughs> oh, okay, you, you know what I sarcastically <laughs> yeah. think. Indeed. Uh, and uh, I started with the violin and uh, I was ju just lucky. I had a really good professor, pedagogues, which is important. Mm. Uh, so... Uh, it happened, and it worked. It it ha it just happens. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. just happened. Uh, so uh, then I was in the Soviet Union, ex-Soviet Union, uh, also very very lucky with the uh, professor Abraham Stern. He finally told me what what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Old school. It's very interesting mixture uh, between uh, old Russian school, traditional Russian school, and and the contemporary American Jewish school. I can tell it's a contemporary American Jewish school. I think I, I was pronounced that the first time in my life, but it's true. Mm. Uh, so after that, classical story, army, yep. and somehow I woke up in Ljubljana, in opera house, five years as a leader of the orchestra and then same job in, in a Philharmonic Orchestra. Uh, and then when my uh, young youngster uh, uh, career uh, finished, uh, I was decided to, to keep calm and, and remove to Maribor, especially because of mentality of people and and some quietness, some, mm. and better nature because I'm a fisherman. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm here for almost 12 years. And uh, there is something special about Maribor, for sure. I mean, the, the people that are native to the area are a, a kind of a group of friends almost. It's a, a different sort of social atmosphere than you might find elsewhere. Yes, there are cliques of things in Ljubljana, there are things around the country, but it's almost like country people, but in a town or in a city. That's interesting. You're completely right. So country people in a town, yes. Uh, they're kind. Yes. Yeah. Have a smile. They talk aloud in, in the restaurant, mm. uh, screaming. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the <laughs> lots of interesting things, but they're honest. Mm. Uh, so uh, I like Maribor and people of Maribor. It's really special uh, historically, and and uh, now of course uh, crisis is everywhere. Uh, but uh, people from Maribor are always pe people from Maribor. Yes, I I don't talk about extremes about. Uh, football fans, about uh, gotcha. idiots, uh, they are everywhere. But uh, uh, Maribor people are uh, warm. Mm. And uh, I like Maribor. Yeah, why not? There's no reason not to. Uh, music number three. Uh, music number three. Oh, let's put some collaboration from my Maribor colleagues. Okay. Who is not from Maribor anyway. It's Zoran Predini. Oh, okay. You know him well. We recorded the, the CD for outside on the English version, English version and and French. Uh, Zoran was obsessed with the languages and and want to present it uh, our work. So uh, we missed some uh, tune, Slovenian tune, and uh, I was writing uh, Kekets 
prearranged the Kekets song, Kekets, uh, but uh, was too much. And he said, uh, okay, let's do some other things uh, because we're uh, playing a Django Reinhardt style. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's my homage au nuage because famous tune of uh, Django Reinhardt yes. is nuage. Yeah. So I wrote and play homage au nuage. The flavor of Django Reinhardt comes to our program <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in some way. <laughs> we could talk about those days because that's quite different, isn't it? I mean, you say you, you graduated from the guitar to a proper instrument, but actually working with Zoran must have been a fun time too. I mean, this was a, a very special time. He's really important to Slovene people and Lachny Franz and all of those issues is a really important part. So that must have been... I remember uh, Zoran uh, when I was much younger. Then now <laughs> uh, they already played with the Lachny France and uh, uh, music was quite okay, it was progressive uh, and but so when I come to Slovenia immediately I'm recognized that's only man who can express in that because Slovenian language is actually very poor to singing. Mm -hmm. I was going uh, to ask uh, that question because I often feel that. I often yeah. Feel it's hard to get a, a rhythm or a rhyme or whatever in, in the language. Not just rhyme. It's, 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 I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's tough. It's hard. Uh, but Zoran is, I think, only one who can put... Th this, it's, he's a poet. Mm -hmm. He's a poet. And uh, he can put uh, the language, Slovenian language, uh, uh, in a, some musical forms and because of that he's very important and and he's really really good in that job mm. and it was my wish wish to uh, work with him uh, uh, of course we are immediately connected uh, and and start to work and spend uh, six or seven years together in a band but that's uh, the problem i cannot play in a band because i have a job yes uh, so you're not really a lot of, lot of <laughs> gigs uh, are cancelled because of me yes. so the, the, but we're still good friends and still collaborate and 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 uh, still find the ways to to to, mm. to to spend the time together musically or like the, or, or like he's uh, a very social man and he's very oh, easy to, to, uh, to like good guy yeah Let's have one more piece of music because time is actually coming on quite a lot. Let's do the next piece of music. Um, okay. Let's put Zoran. Okay. From Napad Lubezny. Two cuisines back to back, but never mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, Nikolia Notch uh, tune from uh, CD Napad Lubezny. I remember we recorded in Nova Gorica many years ago. Uh, he asked me to do some arrangements, so it's Nikola Notch. It's interesting, uh, like like a sixties jazzy, and it's only recording. I, <laughs> it's very interesting. It's only recording when I use my guitar. I don't, I don't, I don't want to tell which one, but but it's one of my favorite guitars. I don't have it anymore, uh, so it's. Historical. Nikola Notch. My guest today in the studio, violinist. Is that right? Do I call you a violinist? It's right. No, in, I... in my in my car, I have a musician. Oh, you just say musician. Yeah. That's because you play much more. Okay. I feel like that. Okay. Good. <laughs> Sasha Olenyuk. And that is, of course, the whole thing, isn't it? You're very relaxed. You, you, you are really happy about being a musician. You love this, this connection you make with the public, obviously. There is something special, isn't there, about a performing musician. You really have to be in that frame of mind always, this connection with people through music. Uh, actually, music is uh, my best friend, uh, and uh, I think it's the best friend of any musician real musician uh, the most prob the biggest problem in music are people <laughs> so uh, it's very simple great musicians uh, it's not important jazz musicians singers uh, conductors or uh, i don't know uh, arrangers uh, are great people mm. they are very kind and i, I was lucky because uh, i i'm work with pavarotti with the uh, 
Lalo Schifrin with Paquito de Rivera, uh, de Rivera with uh, some really, really famous and they're so kind and so simple and 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 really, really. They are the music. Yes. They are music. So it's not complicated to talk about the musical problems, to, to life, to food, to, yeah. to about, uh, I don't know, girls. Uh, <laughs> they're so open and... And, uh, and with good musicians, they're not competitive either. No, not at all. The, not which at is all. No competition. Really, yeah. they, they, they encourage you. Yes. All the time, yeah. they push you, and and it's 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 incredible feeling. So on the end of uh, some uh, concert or or uh, with the, such a big guys, a lot of time you can say, "Well, oh, I'm not so bad." Come on, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, it's 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 yeah. really mo 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 big motivation. Yes, big yeah. motivation, and and uh, every musician. We are all groove like soloists, and our pedagogues are push us to be a soloist, to mm -hmm. be alone, to, to be perfect. But uh, playing on a group uh, in a group uh, is very important, especially to play with uh, such people who, who give you a motivation. Mm, indeed. Are there any that stand out as being, wow, that was really a special moment in my, my career? <sighs> I cannot... All of them. <laughs> every performance, every concert is special. Uh, it's like, a, you know, old question to mm. mother, which child is yes, it's his nonsense. favorite? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a nonsense, nonsense question. <laughs> I accept that. It yeah. is a nonsense question. And so we'll ask you to choose a piece of music to follow my nonsense question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's uh, my favorite, Pat Metheny, uh, Always and Forever. From Secret Story, uh, on the end is uh, one of the last solos of Toots Tillemans on the uh, harmonica. So I always cry when I cry when I listen to that. So it's now an emotional moment. <gasps> the sound of Pat Matheny. <laughs> yeah, but it's technically so good, my God. Yeah. Jeremy Lubbock uh, orchestrations with Consordino, with mutes. <gasps> I was in a stu in studio when they recorded, and Jeremy Lubbock said, on, on these smooth pieces, just mutes, put the mutes on the strings. Mm -hmm. It's, a th you know, it's mm -hmm. strings. But it's fantastic production. Yeah. And then, of course, Toots Tillemans. Oh. <laughs> He's cutting his wrists, folks, <laughs> or pretending to. <laughs>I did ask you this silly question before we played Pat Matheny of, you know, is there any highlight? I will turn that one on its head. Do you remember a time when you walk off the stage feeling disappointed? <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, not every performance, uh, every concert was uh, is uh, successful. Uh, but Yasha Heifetz, one of the great uh, violinists, says, uh, violin player is always happy when he's playing. From one side, he's happy because he's played good. Mm -hmm. And from the other side, he's happy because it will be finished soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> is is because the, the violin is to me it looks technically the most difficult instrument in the orchestra in oh, any way. It's ugliest sound in the world. If it's not maybe perfect. oboe is well, I, yes. almost close but to violin, but, but it's it, it's so full of pathos the oboe. <laughs> but the <laughs> viol the violin technically looks really hard to play. Because there are no, there's no guide. You have to know the instrument. You have to be part of the instrument. It seems almost. <laughs> Technically, I cannot I cannot explain it because uh, after a few years of uh, you already feel that all of this uh, uh, intervals and and uh, I don't want to say violin is the most difficult instrument to play. Ever. It's music, musicians says every instrument is hard to play if you want to play good. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're right. Technically, violin uh, is uh, 
quite difficult and especially because of this colophonium and scratches and mm. <laughs> the difference between good and bad is, is, is not far apart it seems to so me <laughs> different conditions uh, I know in some good concert hall my violin sounds like Stradivari and uh, in some bad conditions I all, all of these colophoniums and scratches you can listen it very presently like mm. uh, Especially problem is microphone, uh, but one is for sure. Violin is most most complicated instrument to recording. Yeah, with a microphone. Yeah, absolutely. And I really hate the modern technique of saying you can put tiny instruments, uh, tiny microphones fixed to the instrument, because it it denies the, for me the space that the the instrument Somet is in. Sometimes uh, sometimes is useful. It's good, but. <laughs> It doesn't produce the sound of the instrument in its That's entirety. That's not idea of violin. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, because yeah. the instrument is very complex. It's in just its to, to make easy, easier job to sound sound engineer. Yeah. And yeah. that's all. Well, in some cases, it's to make an easier job to the cameraman because you want to put a microphone where the cameraman doesn't want it. That's the only other obstacle. Of course, and shadows. Visual and, uh, is uh, quite... Uh, so, uh, those are all sort of complex issues. Let's have another piece of music first before I go any further. Okay. What do we have here? Oh, many years ago in Slovenia, tango was very popular. Still is. But specially, okay. every musician wants to play tango. So we had an order with uh, Bojan Svetrežnik, who is also from Maribor, mm -hmm. uh, from Radvanje, which is yep. across the street of the studio. And uh, I wrote a tango, Rotwein tango, but it's not red wine. Tango, it's Rotwein is old old name from Radvanje, okay. because I was there. Okay. We're uh, so uh, it's Rotwein Tango. Ta -da. <laughs> and he's another special performer too. Yeah, he's he's really interesting and really in love with his instrument, and as you and it's typical, obviously, of all musicians that are connected to the way they work. We don't have a lot longer in the show. My guest today, Sasha Olinuk. Sasha, I will ask you one very ordinary question that probably you get asked by a lot of people. How do you start to play the violin? If you were to give advice to somebody, of course you take lessons and you have to choose the right person and you have to have the right relationship with your teacher. But what about the instrument itself? Do you hire one? Do you buy one? And if so, what and how? I was so young and I don't remember. <laughs> uh, uh, I had a small violin. I still have. The yeah, that's the problem with on, on, children on, learning on, violin. You on, start on with an eighth wall. and then you go to a quarter and then you've got to buy five violins before they get to the yeah, full size. Yeah, yeah. But my father was, of course, on that job. So, so yeah. he, when I I didn't play violin, I'm, I was guitar player. He was with some violin, small, small, small violin, and I'm just try to as your uh, son daughter play, daughter play mm -hmm. flute mm -hmm. uh, so I'm try to scratch some sounds some uh, and after few months when uh, some we have uh, some visits at home I, I have a uh, pictures I'm I'm took the violin and start to play some some mm -hmm. my songs uh, so that's the most important to to try to find something on the instrument mm -hmm. because professors and and teachers uh, can tell you some things uh, which are of course important some basics but i still have uh, that feeling when i play small swan lake or 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 prokofiev sonata i still try to find the sound really? it's really? A absolutely same feeling really interesting so violin playing is a learning process all the time and it's it's a very personal thing all the time because maybe not everybody has that. Violin should be part of your body. Yeah. It's because it's very close. You feel it's, the it's vibrations. On your, yes. on, on your, here, right yes, above your heart. Yes, yeah. violin, if you don't have your own vibrations, yeah. uh, you cannot have a good sound on Stradivari. Mm. So mm. it's very important how you 
hold the 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 the, the, the this yeah it's cuddling part you have to yes, respect of it your body. and become part with it yeah yeah and is there pretension in i mean you've mentioned stradivari a few times obviously this manufacturer of violins was an, is something special but is there pretentiousness in this whole thing is it okay you can buy a perfectly reasonable violin for a child at 400 euros say or something like this of course uh, this man who who buy the Stradivari for a six years old uh, uh, son is crazy, or he's a good investor or a collector. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, but <laughs> it's opposite. It's better to play on the beginning on the bad instruments, on Chinese instruments. Okay, because you have to and, work harder. And yeah, of course. Okay, and, and then you 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 have a present, and then you wow. This, yeah. uh, my father gave me one very, very uh, uh, priceless for me violin, uh, and immediately I, I'm started to practice a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that, that that's the mystery of uh, instrument of, of uh, history of uh, this funny piece of wood. Uh, yes. It's, it's yeah. a lot of movies, uh, stories. Uh, and we needed 10 shows to, to discover Indeed, and all I, the secrets. I, I, absolutely, and I, I have spent um, a couple of hours actually at a workshop with a local violin maker mm. here in Slovenia who was just totally in love with every piece of wood and the detail of everything right down to the final oil that's put on it changes and modifies and enhances or otherwise the, the, the nice. instrument. Absolutely. Yes. More music, please. More music. Okay, let's go back to guitar. Okay. Rosenberg Trio. Undecided. When are you going to make your mind up? <laughs> it's a joke. It's okay. We won't leave that in. Okay. <laughs> okay. The last part of our conversation. We've just listened to the Rosenberg Trio. Yeah. And a very nice sound too. Let us look at the future. What's for you? You're comfortable, obviously, here working in Maribor and you're giving audiences great enjoyment. Uh, do you plan the future or do you just let it happen? You just day by day enjoy this process of playing and performing? Oh, uh, I'm very satisfied in the moment. So uh, I have a good life and uh, I really don't want to have a plans. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe to buy some better car or something really? like that. But <laughs> <Is> that so <laughs> important. <laughs> It's really not important. No, quite. Uh, I'm really satisfied. So I don't have any projects, any big plans, uh, any. Uh, I just left. Let it happen. River to 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 bring something. Of course, working with an orchestra in an establishment like the opera here is fairly uh, consistent. You know that you're fairly secure in a way, providing you continue to perform well, you're fairly secure in your task. But does that in itself mean that you'd like to rush off and do something slightly different from time to time? Of course, I, I do something different all the time. Uh, I play uh, solistic with my uh, uh, girlfriend. Uh, I also play in uh, with the, in duo some funny music with the Bostian Gombach. Yep. I still uh, play gypsy music with the uh, uh, Firen, with the Shukar, with the uh, Vitalios Machko. <coughs> so I'm not just uh, uh, in the oil uh, like uh, Rumstek. In the classical world, do you have a favorite composer? Oh, it's a worst question. I know. <laughs> yeah. so I put it in. <laughs> no, uh, no. no. Uh, basically, I was uh, as a kid against the contemporary music, and uh, but uh, when I met uh, Mr. Penderecki, he's completely changed my mm -hmm. world. So uh, I cannot. Uh, of course, in opera, musically, Puccini is my favorite. Uh, Symphonically, <laughs> it's uh, uh, some Mahler, and but I didn't bring any recordings of the classical music. And it's very <laughs> hard to respect them in the show because I don't have time to play enough of them either. Yeah, you know, if you give me a piece of long, Mahler, yeah, yeah. we don't want to listen to a teeny extract. No, 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 no. It's it's. So it's, I actually respect that. Thank it's you. A crime. Yes, I agree entirely. I mean, we uh, can't talk over Mahler. That doesn't make but, sense. Uh, actually, one of my colleagues says uh, it's not 
composer. Okay, you have a music, but uh, every composer, it's me. Because I tell the story. Mm -hmm. He's just wrote the story. Yeah, absolutely. So you can put your own personal accentuation on, yeah. on the music. That's the point. Very, very interesting, and you're certainly a, a great authority. I'm really, really respectful of the time you've, you've given me for the interview. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we certainly respect your music and the whole of the orchestra. I, I love coming to the performances. You're uh, always particularly welcome. Particularly when you know you have a conductor who's got something new to offer and he's full of energy. This you you see the whole orchestra come alive. Yeah, yeah. You feel every part of that, and it's very visible to us in the audience. So thank you all, not just for you. How will we finish our conversation musically? What will be the last piece of music? Let's rock the world. Uh, <laughs> it's a completely different uh, music. Uh, Brian Setzer, ex-guitar player from Stray Cats. Uh, Dirty Boogie CD. But I'm just the r really calm uh, uh, tune. It's Hollywood Nocturne with a genius brass section. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha Olenyuk, Hvala Lipa. You're welcome.